Hey, you been over to Touch Body Works yet? Go to Touch Body Works at EvokeTouch.com. That's E V O K E Touch.com. With skincare products that's so natural, you can eat it. But don't. I don't know. Just every time something in the. In the, in the some development in the story, then suddenly like, I see a a post. These bitches, they did that to my little girl. And then from there until the next time, nothing. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. No, and I mean honest, that's that's suspect. Cause I mean I feel the same way I feel about like you know the um, Jean Benet Ramsey story. Hold that how, thought. Hold that thought. We gonna do that in yeah, here. Cause goodness, that was weird. I mean, her parents were just. We I mean, I just. For that. I'm. I'm really. I'm into true crime too. So and like serial killers and about. serial killers and stuff. I mean, I just. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy or something. Probably. But I'm. I'm really into like you know understanding why they do what they do because there's always a lot of trauma. There's always you know child abuse, sexual abuse, things like that that go into why they did the crime, you know, why they commit the crimes that they did later on. And I mean, it's n not excusing those things, but I mean, I just, I think it's very interesting to be able to see what causes people to do things. Yeah, I'm the same way. I'm, um, I'm big in true crime. I like, like, um, I've talked about it on my show before, so I ain't breaking news, but like, I'm, my big passion project right now is the uh, car brothers mm -hmm. and that i've been tracking that for like i think since i started filming mm. <laughs> <laughs> i know they mad they can't stop number one sound yeah, tracking the world black on the number one movie we was making records making the whole world making the whole world this is the I'm Kind of Famous Podcast. I'm your host, Dustin Rowe. New week, new episode every Thursday. iTunes, Google Music, SoundCloud, Stitcher, YouTube, Podbean, anywhere that you listen to podcasts. K-I-N-D-A Famous Pod T-O-D on Facebook, Twitter, and all that extra stuff. Hey, look, I got a lot that I'm finna... Let me get these damn plugs. Let me just hit the plugs, because I'm kind of excited for this one. So, the plugs, uh, clean-ass people collectors over on arrowfilms.com, A-R-O-W-E films.com. Go over to the merch, get them clean-ass people collectors. I got a new one, I think I just... Well, by the time you hear this, it should already be up. Uh, with some photography stuff on there. And you can get the uh, People Collector or you can get the Wi-Fi or the I'm Kind of Famous Podcast t-shirt. While you're on Aerofilms.com, you can get the book, Wi-Fi Rock Bottom, something about meth, or you can go watch it on YouTube, youtube.com slash Aerofilms, A-R-O-W-E, films on YouTube. And while you're there, you can look at all the video content and podcast content for the I'm Kind of Famous Podcast on the playlist. And on the official website, aerofilms.com, you got the photography stuff. All right, words, 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 blah, blah, blah. Let's jump into this one. Now, this week, um, by the time, I mean, if you listen to this, you know that we've been talking about the Kanika Jenkins case that um, happened in Chicago. But not doing this by myself. Uh, if you listen to the Queen X um, episode last week, had someone just jump in there and interrupt the conversation <laughs> uh, and we're talking about some financial stuff some finances things like that she had made mention about um, how how to deal with finances while you know being happy enjoying like some of the things that you like in life now I never asked the name oh if someone said a name I never asked it she just started talking I just kept it moving but I'm gonna have you say your name I'm gonna introduce you but she has that, but she also has a, a issue or a, a cause, I'm going to say, that uh, I think is pretty important. I never even thought about it until she mentioned it, and I overheard it uh, after we finished recording um, the Queen X episode, uh, also known as the Black Men Don't Cheat episode, <laughs> which I'm pretty sure that made a whole room of people upset. <laughs> but um she mentioned something that i before i got too deep in this i want to make sure she has an opportunity to talk about it um because i think awareness to that is 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 important uh especially if you're not even thinking about it 
So, Dominique, may you? I don't know if you you can say your last name if you want to. If you don't, we'll just leave that Dominique. <laughs> I don't know if you want them stalkers out there on there, but. Uh, oh, no. I model a little bit, so stalkers are always nice. <laughs> oh, man. I'm telling you. they I love it. I lo- it let me know I'm popping. Like, right oh, now. shit. I'm doing something. I got a couple people checking me out. Um, so, Dominique, uh, I'm going to have you introduce yourself and, um, you know, talk about that the cause that you mentioned. Okay. So, um, my name is Dominique Vontris. Um, I'm 20 years old. Um I'm actually, this is my seventh year, I want to say, here in America itself. Um, I grew up overseas. My dad's oh, retired uh, Navy and everything. Um, go military. <laughs> overseas where? Um, I grew up in uh, Guam and Japan. Um, you know, we, <laughs> we lived in a few different states also, um, but the majority of my childhood I spent on islands. <laughs> wow. Well, you know now to stay away from these islands. <laughs> No, islands, oh my goodness, they're gorgeous. Um, anyway, um, so I've been talking a lot with an organization called uh, DKMS, who, uh, you know, does like, you know, the bone marrow donations and things like that. Um, it's a really simple little mouse swab. Um, honestly, it takes less than five minutes of your time to do, you know, that and to see if you could possibly save someone's life. Um, and that kind of really stood out to me because not only is it personal for me because I have a cousin who uh, passed away from a bone cancer, but I also am a mixed girl. And a lot of people don't know. What but that means is light skin. She's real <laughs> light skin. No, I'm a, I'm a complete mutt, y'all. Um, my dad is not full black. My mom is not full white. And so I am a mix of a lot of different things. Um, and because of that, it's very difficult for people like me to be able to get, you know, bone marrow and things donated to us. Um, just because, you know, the way that genetics are. Um, most likely, the only people that would be able to donate to me personally would be my sisters. And even then, um, that's kind of dicey too, because my sisters, while, you know, we're still sisters and everything, we still have our differences um, in our, you know, just our genetic material. Whereas, you know, I'm complete, I'm a complete light skin. Um, my hair's blonde right now. People mistake me for, you know, being like Spanish, Colombian, stuff like that. Um, <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> yeah, no. Colombiana. Yeah. <laughs> that's my most popular right now. And I mean, I will say I'm Hispanic, and so it works, I guess. Um, but my middle sister, she is mistaken for Puerto Rican all the time. Uh, she looks mm. completely Blexican, just black, Mexican. yeah, black and Mexican. We're um, gonna use new, <laughs> new slang, new slang today. And she went to North, and so you know it worked for her and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Over in Little Mexico. Um, so, We're not know, too far from it right now. No, I love Riverside. I have to say, um, this is one of the prettiest parts of Wichita, in my opinion. Um, I used to walk down here during the summer all the time. Um, so shout out to Northside. Shout out to Northside. <laughs> now with the bone, bone marrow thing, you said it's just, you, you take a swab, mm-hmm. go into a database. And so what what is the hope from getting into this? Or is it just more so to have more uh, samples in this mm-hmm. database? Um, right now, I mean, honestly, it's just to have people available for, uh, you know, to donate because, you know, taking the, uh, the swab is basically saying, yes, I consent to, you know, being able to donate my bone marrow or anything else um, if need be, if we find a match for me. Um, and so, I mean, at the end of the day, it's honestly just a possibility to save a life. Um, and I mean, I, I'm not sure what could beat that. I mean, in my opinion, donating my bone marrow is, you know, a very small you know, sacrifice to make to be able to say, you know, turn someone's entire life around. Now, I watched the episode of House one time, <laughs> and this kid needed bone marrow from his brother, almost similar to what you said. And he went in there with a, a syringe. I don't know how big this mother, it was thick. It was thick like a, like a number two pencil. Went right into the bone, pulled out all that marrow. And it looked like it hurt so bad. Yeah, no, I've I've heard um, that it's that it hurts like crazy. Um, personally, I have a lot of medical problems, um, so I get stuck with the needle probably a few times a month, um, at the very least. It used to be like you know once or twice a week. Uh, <laughs> um, never, I've never done like a spinal tap or anything. Um, mm. We almost have had to before, um, and that needle is pretty terrifying, I will say. Um, but like I said, um, I mean, I. I don't know. I'm someone who, you know, just I, I like doing things. I like helping people. I like, you know, helping my community. And I mean, it, it just it really meant it, I mean, it it really upset me how many people lose their life over something that, you know, somebody else could help with. I mean, 
I want to say less than half of the people who actually need donations get them. And that's just, you know, across the board. Mm. Um, you know, that's not, you know, I'm not talking, you know, just mixed kids. I'm not talking, you know, just white kids. Just black. That's just of all races. Um, and so just in general, people are not, you know, applying to be donors enough. We just don't have enough people right now. Um, Why do you think so? Why do you think people don't? Um, honestly, in my opinion, um, probably just a lack of education about it. Um, cause I mean, even me, I did not know about this group until I saw an ad on Facebook. Um, I, to Facebook. <laughs> yeah, no, Facebook ads are, I mean, they either you love the ads or you buy things that you don't need. I mean, <laughs> that is true. I'm buying some bullshit before. <laughs> yeah. Just completely. Just cause it was like, damn, <laughs> I can get a grill for $15. <laughs> Yeah, no, and Facebook's really good about that, too. Um, but no, and I kind I talked to the group a little bit, um, and, I mean, just everything that they stood for, I, I mean, you know, all everything that I want to accomplish in my life kind of lined up with that. Um, like I said, helping community, helping other people, I mean, being able to save a life. Um, and, I mean, we have, you know, military people. You know, my dad out there, you know, he served yeah. 20 years, risked his life every single day, um, you know, for this country. And I just feel like the, I, I mean, and I tried to, you know, join the military, have, you know, too many medical problems at this point, but I felt like I needed to do something. I mean, I, I feel like I am put on this planet to be able to change things and to be able to help. And even if it's something as small as that, I mean, looking at one person's, you know, smiling face because you were able to help I'm them. <laughs> Um, so, so plug the group one more time. Um, tell people how to get to it if you can recall. Um, DKMS, I want to say it's uh, .org, um, but honestly, if you just look it up. And there's quite a few other um, organizations that do that same thing. I know there's, like, Be The Match. Um, but, you know, just DKMS was the one that, you know, I contacted, I got in touch with. Um, and they're actually wanting to uh, do a pretty big event for Wichita with me. Um, and so I've been kind of planning that out for a little bit. Um, definitely looking for sponsors. <laughs> um, I'm hoping to be able to, you know, get a few local businesses on board, um, you know, local artists, you know, local rappers, musicians. I mean, just honestly, I want this to be a big community event. Um, and what is it called again? Um, the organization itself is DKMS. DKMS. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to tell you particularly what it's called. <laughs> DKMS uh, dot org. That's right. And you can go on there. Uh, we delete blood cancer i don't know what that means <laughs> but go on to dk dkms.org it's a lot of good information i'm gonna check it out as soon as we finish this up um and uh you know like you say support somebody keep people alive if you want them keep them alive because <laughs> apparently it seems like we don't um and, and i'm pretty sure like you know with these hurricanes and natural disaster events some people are probably getting hurt and need some help in some form and you could be that person it may not take your life but it may take a little piece of you to help somebody else uh keep a piece of themselves oh man yeah and it's free i mean solid. it's com it's completely free to do it too um <laughs> you want to save somebody's life by donating some bone marrow if, you know you're a match with them it, it costs nothing to you um you know they will get you out there to be able to you know do the surgery or you know whatever you need to do um sometimes it's a little bit more invasive than you know just getting some bone marrow um i have to say that um but like i said it doesn't cost anything to be able to change somebody's life so all right now we're gonna jump into the hard part of the show <laughs> here um uh i'm trying to multitask we're gonna jump right into it i got a i got a model shoot after this so uh and i am hitting sin and i'm putting my phone down all right so we're talking kanika jenkins um, so Kanika Jenkins, I'm gonna give y'all a little background on this because <sighs> it's a weird one, it's a little tough one. Uh, it's a tough one just because it seemed like it's something that shouldn't happen, like it seemed like it's it, it, it should be so easy to figure out what happened here. So, what I want to do, um, we'll give a little background, go through some of the conspiracy stuff. Uh, give our own like well alright here's another piece I got a friend that works uh, for a federal agency who can give who get, gave I asked to research uh, some of this and tell me what she thought because for me I'm really into true crime I think I said this before uh, and so something like this is like it sparked my interest because 
first social media got to it and then once it got in my pocket i'm like hold on this shit does seem kind of weird and so i asked her a few questions versus like some of the speculation that some of the speculation y'all may have heard on the show last week um how some of those thought processes align with how the process of solving crime works um and then just some of the how some of the conspiracy stuff may not align with the actual facts of the case and then we can jump into like what we think happened all right so you ready <laughs> all right here we go all right so i'm gonna give a little backdrop on this uh real quick kanika jenkins was a 19 year old uh found in a hotel freezer in chicago um that's 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 she was partying with some friends that night um and somehow she came up missing between her friends uh the friends uh eventually told her parents that she was missing had her car keys and her phone um and then when the parents went over to the hotel, the hotel was kind of lackadaisical about helping, uh, telling them that they need to have a police report in order to um, start to look around the hotel and look at some of the surveillance information. Uh, they went and got the police report. Um, uh, what happened after that? They got the police report. The hotel was still acting lazy about it. <clears throat> they started banging on doors trying to figure if anyone that was uh, uh in the hotel at the time, may have even seen her, seen her around, or may have saw her that night. That prompted the hotel to call the police on the family. The police show up, and uh, the parents or the fam, the mom and the, uh, uh, I think older sister it was, um, pleaded with the police enough that the police said, "All right, fine. Let's go look at the surveillance." They start the canvas jesus christ they start to canvas the hotel eventually finding kanika in the freezer frozen uh to death i mean like kind of hand in hand there and with let's see found her frozen um with no real idea of how she got there um with the idea of selling the idea that she went in there on her own accidentally closed up and couldn't get out. Uh, what else we got there? I think I think that's the gist of the story. And we're at a place where we don't know what happened. There's a lot of surveillance video out there. Or not a lot. There is surveillance video out there that was put out. Uh, that really shows nothing more than that. She seemed very, very, very intoxicated. If it was even her, might I add. Because there was some speculation with that too. All right, we're going to jump into the conspiracy <laughs> stuff, too. I'm just going I'm just giving the facts as they came out. And um there was I think I think that's I think that's about it on the facts. I mean, the case is still unsolved and they're trying to figure out what happened. And I think I'm going to leave there. Uh so that's the backstory. Before we get too far in the story cuz I'm itching to get there, but I think we got to talk some things out first and make an hour episode. Um, how did you first hear about this? Um, on social media, like everything else, um, I had seen that, you know, a lot of people were, uh, sharing the, you know, live video that was supposedly taken, you know, with her in the room and everything. Um, now this video is the one where, uh, there's a friend talking into mm -hmm. the video and then some can interpret that behind in, in the background of that as her laying now and some other things going on. Go ahead. Right. Um. I mean, of course, with it came a lot of, you know, different speculation from different people um, about, I mean, honestly, when I first saw it, I saw about three different versions of the story, um, all completely different. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, social media, like anything else, of course, they didn't see like, you know, it on the news or anything at first, because that doesn't happen anymore. No, no, it is. Um, it, I know. We should we should talk more about that. Um, <laughs> no, nah, it's some shit going on behind us that clearly we're not doing shit right now. But um, so for me, I think I found I did find out on social media, and um, at first I ignored it because I I tend to ignore a lot of things that's happening because I feel like things get amplified and turned up for me to emotionally react, and I don't emotionally react to everything, so I kind of let it go. And then it came up one more time. Then a website I like to go to, it came up on that. I'm like, what the fuck is, like, what is this? 
And so then I looked into it, and it was like a real life who done it at this point for me, which intrigues me and is interesting. I don't know why people talk so goddamn loud, but um. So then when I started to look into it, it's like I was thinking like, what? Like it, it was. <laughs> I, don't know, I still don't know how to talk about it because it's still weird. Like, how does a person end up in the freezer? No, I mean, the entire story, I mean, from the very, from the top to the very bottom of it, honestly, is captivating. I mean, that's, you know, just what it is. Um, I was drawn to it immediately. And then, you know, once again, I'm someone who's very emotional. And so I always, you know, connect like little personal things to everything. Um, I have two younger sisters. And so, you know, of course, you know, that kind of thing scares me. Um, Fair enough. One of my sisters is going to Butler. Uh, she's living at, you know, our parents' house and everything. Um, pretty much by herself because I live with my boyfriend right now. Um, and then my other sister lives in Minnesota. And so, you know, I don't ever even get to see her. Uh, and so, of course, that scared me. And then I sat there and I was like, well, my sisters, neither of them have friends. So, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's not about to happen. They're not about to go to a hotel party or anything. Um, <laughs> Which is pretty common, like, these hotel parties. But yeah. before, uh, all right, so let me ask this before we get too crazy. Uh, are you into other crime and crime mysteries and things like that in general? Um, a hundred percent everything. Um, me and, uh, my boyfriend were constantly watching crime shows. Um, he is always watching, yeah, <laughs> we do. I mean, he, he, he doesn't watch, you know, like the, um, the women murderer things. Cause I'm, I'm pretty sure it's, he's like, I'm, I'm not going to give you two. You're, you're good on that. Yeah. No, no, I got too many knives. <laughs> no. Um, but no, we, we enjoy watching, um, you know, crime shows and things like that. Um, I'm personally, I'm incredibly into serial killers. Um, like I've said uh, before, I am just really interested into why they do the things that they do. Um, cause I've seen, you know, a multiple multitude of different people, um, you know, come from abuse and things like that turn out different than, you know, the serial yeah. killers have, you know, during their, you know, years of abuse and things like that. Um, and so that's always been very interesting to me. Um, just kind of getting into, you know, the whole psyche of why people do what they do. I, this is a weird question. I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> Favorite serial killer? <laughs> um, oh, my God. Okay. So um, I would have to say probably John Wayne Gacy, but only because oh he's one of the ones that I've done the most amount of research on. Um, there's, like, you know, Albert Fish. I mean, and there's a classic, you know, what? Bundy and things like that. Look at you, Albert <laughs> Fish. No one says that. All right. Well, no, because, like I said, I've I've studied um, serial killers pretty, you know, in depth. Um, I kind of spend a lot of my time on Reddit. So, <laughs> oh God, oh God, yeah, oh yeah. I'm afraid now. All right, um, damn, Casey. <laughs> well, I'm, no, I, I mean, I don't know, just everything, because I'm afraid of clowns, and so everything about I'm ready, you clown ass motherfuckers too. <laughs> Stay away from me. Well, no, I mean, just everything Not about clown, what he just did goofy. was <laughs> anyway. I'm going on the tangent. Yeah. Go ahead. No, and I mean, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen the new release of it. Um. <laughs> Actually, I haven't yet. I'm a, I'll probably see it sometime this week. I just finished like all 10 hours of the first one <laughs> just to see what all the hype was. I don't understand. Old people, I said it before, I don't know why y'all were so afraid of this movie. Like, maybe <laughs> I just saw it too late. It's just... It was kind of goofy to me. Well, no, and what I keep on trying to explain to everyone, even with the newer It, it's not supposed to scare you as an adult. It's supposed to scare the child in you because that's what the original It was always about. And that's see, why the child in me kid. had Chucky, Puppet <laughs> Mouse, like legit, like, like Freddy, like you couldn't go to sleep. But like, it, I don't know, I guess because I enjoyed Bozo the Clown when I was <laughs> coming up. I wanted to win prizes. Well, no, see, for me, my parents actually, um, I remember very distinctly, they were watching it one night. Um, I was very, very young. I came into the living room and my parents were the type of parents that were like, we're watching what we're watching. If you want to watch it, you can stay. And if you don't, then you got to get out. Um, <laughs> you know, so they just never sugarcoated anything for us. Um, we saw a, a lot of scary movies I growing up. I bills around here. <laughs> well, yeah, no, if I mean, that's bills, definitely. you can change the channel. <laughs> yes, and so. Um, give it applause back. <laughs> I sat there and I walked in on the shower scene where he was in the bathroom with the little boy, comes out the drain, teeth get all scary and sharp, and that permanently scarred me as a child. Um, made me afraid of any type of person in any kind of costume for anything. Um, you know, like those big animals at like Disneyland and things. Yeah, I don't mess with those types of people. Um, I'm not into, you know, big costumed 
things. I'm not into clowns. If I can't see who you are, then I don't want to mess with she you. She don't go to basketball <laughs> games. <laughs> You come out with that mascot, you might get your <laughs> no, shit fucked up. No, this is really, are, see, now we're getting it figured out. Now we know why you're in the crime. You're trying to figure out how you can get away. You're going to be the mascot killer. So, you done put it out there. Um, let's see. I see, I'm, I'm in a true crime. Um, serial killers, I'm okay with, I, 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 I think I'm into it, I, I mean, all kinds. I really like a good mystery, though. Like, before we cracked the mic, you said something about John Bonet. That's like my, like, mm-hmm. That's like my number one. I mean, that's one, my number I'm gonna one. I'm say number so. one, maybe one, two. I can't think not on the spot. I can't think right now. But like the John Bonet joint is just like, yo, man. All right, who you think did it? Um, honestly, I'm very torn about that. Um, because in all, I mean, 100, percent I feel like the brother most likely was the one who, you know, too rough with her, um, and the parents tried to cover it up. So, I mean, at the end of the day, they have just as much part in it as he does, in my opinion. Um, I've watched a lot of documentaries about it. Um, I've read, you know, all the articles and absolutely everything, um, and I've played the situation in my mind a thousand and one times. And the only conclusion that I can ever get to, honestly, is the brother. I think an intruder did it. <laughs> no, I don't. I, I don't know. Like I, I do, I do have the brother aspect um, in me. Just, just, I, uh, yeah. I mean, because there's so many pieces from the ransom note to like all these things just look like all right. Y'all did that clearly, uh, but I, I also can't like. If he was rough with her and she died, they also went out there with a stun gun, apparently, and like, I mean, maybe, I don't know, or, or he did. What's his name? Burke. Mm-hmm. Burke Ramsey. <laughs> we coming after you, boy. Um, but yeah, that's one of my top ones. I, I, I just like crime. I just like the idea of like, why, you know? Um, so good. So then we can, then you know how to go through rabbit holes, especially <laughs> if you're on Reddit. You on Reddit? You you been through some rabbit holes. Well, no, and I I don't know. Like for Reddit, I always I always start off like completely normal. You know, like just you know going through like you know their little homepage, and I see you know like the funny, what is gifts of like you know animals and things like that. I go right to crime. I go right to conspiracy. No, and like you know I get there too. Um, and then I I always find myself in um that subreddit about you know unsolved mysteries. That's one of my absolute favorites. Shit, we should have ran into into (laughs) each other by now because I'd be all in that part. Oh no, like that, and then um, goodness, what? And then I don't know. Like somehow I get to like. Videos of people dying. Like, I don't... Please tell me I'm not the only oh, one you, that, like, gets that kind of weird stuff. I mean... Because <laughs> I'm not watching nobody die. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it just feels like YouTube to me. Like, where, you know, you start off watching music videos and then get into, like, alien conspiracy theories. I mean, unless if you're my mom, that's what always happens. Oh, so. if, if you're my mom, <laughs> you just showed all this stuff to show that you out here chasing down <laughs> these thoughts. But my mom is the crazy. <laughs> No, and that's probably where I get it from. I mean. <laughs> all right. So now, all right. So we have established a baseline. We both like crime. She like it a whole lot more than I do. <laughs> um, so Kanika Jenkins. Um, so you may, you mentioned, uh, and I don't have, like, I'm not, I don't have a list. I'm just going to hit them as I think about them. And since you mentioned it, you said the, if that even is her, assume you got, so we got the body double. We got Stone Cold over here too, but we got the body (laughs) double theory. So, is that one you believe or? Um, I don't know. Because once again, I am, I'm somebody who, I want to know what happened just as much as everybody else does. But what I want to keep away from is adding too much speculation. You know, too much. You know, emotional. Too much of my own opinion in it because I want you know for the sake of the family and you know for the sake of her you know, for us to be able to just clear the air, you know, just what happened. I just, I want to know what happened. Um, and so I'm not a huge fan of, you know, like all like the little extra conspiracy, whatever going around. Um, but on the other hand, I do think it's important to mention, um, to me, that surveillance video, um, I was able to pick out some things that looked a little bit off. Um, I like know, what? Well, I mean, for starters, I mean, definitely her body shape. That was one of the things that really stood out to me. Because as you, if you look at her, you know, in her profile pictures and everything, um, 
she is kind of you know kind of like skinnier and taller looking whereas you know the girl in the video was you know obviously more thick and things like that um and you know that can just be said to you know the surveillance video squashing things because you know that happens frequently with you know a surveillance video where everything's kind of stretched out it's short glad you said it because i was because <laughs> i i See, I tried to avoid doing my own little forensic <laughs> things. I said, man, let me see one of these videos. And I put it square the way surveillance. See, all right, so I'm going to I'll get two pieces on that. This is my personal. As a video person, y'all better know this <laughs> if you've been listening to this show. But um, when you shrink it down, it does bring things into a better proportion. So then she does look skinny. But at the same time, I do know that you have HD surveillance. So you do have a what we would call 16 by 9 1080 uh resolution that i mean maybe i don't know at what version of the hotel was updated or upgraded if if ever you can have you can have surveillance that have your 16 by 9 which is the rectangle that we all know with hd tvs versus the square which is a lot of surveillance when you go behind a convenience store and you see a little old school tv or when you have four videos in one, it's going to be a square. So it's possible. I just don't know the surveillance. I don't know, you know, the particulars of the hotel. So that that is the body shape. I, I, I saw that before. And I was like, I don't know who would go, you know, be that extensive into. Well, no. and see, I don't know. No, that's what I was th like. And, I mean, that was my first thought is why go to the lengths of that? Like, why? If it was, you know, a recreation of, you know, what supposedly happened, why? Why do all of that? Why spend all this time and all this effort, all this energy on faking the story with this, you know, one teenage black girl? Because, um, you know, there's been, a, I mean, I hate to say it, but there's a lot of teenage black girls who, you know, have gone missing, who have died and things like that. I mean, just recently, honestly. Um, and so why this particular girl? Why this particular young woman? Excuse me, you're not going to call her a girl anymore. 19 um, years old. Right, 19-year-old young woman. Um, why? And I actually, I just recently, I read um, another little conspiracy theory thing. This, um, this, is, this <laughs> is the time to do it. Let's hit all of them. I mean, that's all that we have at this point, yeah. I've realized. Because, um, you know, it would be really great if we could have, you know, a lot of, you know, fact and things. But, I mean, we just, we don't have almost any fact. I mean, all we know is that she was at the hotel, her friends were at the hotel, and they were in a room together at one point and she was found in a freezer. I mean, mm. at the end of the day, that's all the solid, you know, evidence that, you know, and information that we have right now. Um, but I read something that was saying that she actually, because I remember seeing this um, before where people were saying that her picture, they'd seen it before. It's been going like, you know, it went around earlier this year, um, late last year, something like that. And they were saying or, you know, this uh, thing that I read was saying that she had actually been gang raped and mur or ga she was gang raped um at the hotel previously or you know wherever wherever and she had been put into witness protection to protect her from her accused like you know from the you know accused people that had raped her um so they wouldn't go after her and even that i was why why put a gang rape victim in witness protection like how often because i'm i'm not i'm not a hundred you know i i'm not you know into you know the police i'm not in the police force or anything so i'm not you know sure what the you know what they do for you know victims like that but going out of their way to put her in witness protection and then you know recreate the video and then all this extra i mean i just i it feels too I mean, much yeah, right exactly unnecessary extra i mean said. right throw the you know throw the people who raped her in jail and that should be you know the end of that yeah i uh, mean that because i mean much. if we have enough information to be able to put her in witness protection then we have to have enough information to be able to put her you know the people who did this to her in jail and now, so that just didn't make any sense to me now earlier i think in earlier in the summer chicago did have the gang rape like 16 year old or something like that they did it on facebook live did you, you hear about this yeah yeah the girls and, and so i don't know where we're at in that case i know there was some you know some a couple people that were arrested or or uh interviewed in terms of their connection to it 
But, I mean, that's another thing that happened in Chicago. I don't know how plausible, you know, it happened in twice. Or if this was, the, I mean, that's weird. Like like you said, like to have a, right. a I mean, victim, like, oh, let's put in, in witness protection. Let's change. Right. I mean, I don't know. how often does it happen to rape victims? I mean, just like really honestly, I'm not saying. I know they'll you know, keep their name out of the media and out right. of the news. But, but as far as, as far like as treat them like uh, John Gotti, I don't. <laughs> no, exactly. I mean, on that was my, that's how I felt about it. Um, but I mean, I will say that, I mean, you have to, we have to look at where it is. It's Chicago. Who it's, who it's involving? A bunch of, you know, young black people. Um, Niggas. <laughs> right. That's what I'm going to say. She ain't got to say I'm going to say <laughs> And so, I mean, at the end of the day, we already know the climate in Chicago, how the police force in Chicago feels about, you know, solving cases like that. Because um, I even, you know, I read something that was saying, um, you know, her murder was in retaliation for something that her brother did with, you know, gang involvement, whatever. Mm. And so, you know, unfortunately, um, as, you know, all of us know, Chicago tends to turn a blind eye to gang violence because and you know a lot of their minds you know it's the gangs are killing each other so why do we have to do why should we do anything about it yeah. i mean you know they're kind of taking care of the problem for us um well, i put officers in harm's way mm -hmm. for people who are just a problem anyway exactly um and so you, we have to you know take all that into consideration and so i think just where it was and even you know the climate of america right now it all plays into this case and it makes it you know an incredibly interesting case you know the fact that she's a young black woman with you know what's going on in america right now um the fact that the police involvement didn't seem enough at first it didn't seem like they really cared about it it didn't seem like it was something that they were wanting to really you know spend their time and effort on um what's the, i can't think it's a conspiracy another theory of i'm so when i'm saying conspiracy i'm saying things that are like a bit outrageous considering the circumstances well there's theories that you can that can be somewhat plausible but i want to make sure we balance out between uh extraordinary and versus like okay this is a possible scenario that could actually have happened um so then another one is that the hotel has something to do with her murder what do you think about that one um and see and i mean even that because i i heard that you know if the hotel did have something to do with it it was it becomes a huge like human trafficking thing at that point um and then like you know um not only that but then also like uh you know organ trafficking and stuff um that was you know another huge thing especially with her being put into a freezer a good one. <laughs> well no i mean with her being put into a freezer <laughs> a i mean i definitely i see that um damn i didn't think about that i mean but okay but it seems all right let's just let's play with let's play that one out so the hotel has something to do with it then you have all this surveillance that has her isolated walking through the hotel. You would think that if the hotel has something to do with it, um, that she would be escorted along the way throughout uh, the building for that to be a, I mean, all the way even to the, to the, um, the kitchen when she, you got the surveillance of being in the kitchen. Like if she was in the kitchen by herself, staggering around, unless, you know, Pennywise was in there saying, come on, come on this way. And she was like, I'm coming. I'm coming. You got some bundles in there. Like, well, no, because even for that, um, I was, you know, once again, reading stuff where people were saying that, you know, they could hear like, you know, voices telling her like which way to go, which how on a surveillance video you heard a voice telling her which way to go. I'm not sure. Very not often that you're going to have surveillance. <laughs> like, right, exactly. Um, so... Um, but there were also people who were saying that, you know, they saw people behind her. You know, they saw shadows, you know, walking with her and things like that. Um, and Did so, you see it? <laughs> well, personally, I see no, it. I mean, no, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> I didn't really, I mean, honestly, I didn't see anything besides, you know, a girl who, I don't know, looked like she, because, I mean, and even, because I don't know, I'm, I've been drunk before. And I'm, I mean, most people have been drunk before. Drunk? Yes. Okay. You know, drunk. Um, not me, y'all know. <laughs> like and then I mean, heck, I mean, let's be honest. You know, over half the people my age have you know <laughs> been on drugs and things too. And have you ever? Want, I mean, and you do a lot of stupid stuff when you're drunk. But 
jumping, like walking into a freezer in a kitchen. I mean, that just, that, that's never made any sense to me. Um, you know, and trying to sit there and say, oh, well, you know, you do all kind of stupid stuff when you're turned and blah, blah, blah. Okay, but how turned do you need to be to walk into a freezer? And then how did you open a heavy freezer being that, t- I mean, just the entire, th- I don't know, just everything about that situation just didn't make any sense to me. Um, even, you know, being drugged to, you know, the point where, you know, you don't know what you're really doing. I mean, typically you pass out. I mean, I've seen a lot. I mean, personally, I've never like, you know, been roofied or anything, but you know, you got, you pass out in my, you know, knowledge well, of yeah, it. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll hold on that, that piece a little bit. Have you, so for me trying, I mean, preparing for the show a little bit and just kind of looking over it before I decided I want to do a show on it. How difficult has it been, like, going through that YouTube matrix of, like, ooh, here's another video. Nah, this is bullshit. Like, how hard has it been to, like, try to tune out other people's trying to make you see things that Mm -hmm. is like, "Mm, I don't know, man. Like, how, how, like, I mean, as a person who goes through the Reddits and has to weed out (laughs) things a lot, like, how tough is it to, for you, or has it been, or have you even got that far to be able to uh you know figure out all right this is good information versus this is more trash information um well personally i'm nosy um i kind of if you're friends with me on facebook then i've probably gone through your profile pretty deeply um i know who you're in a relationship oh, with shit. i know who you're talking you know because like I don't, i'm nosy um so facebook, you know <laughs> the, the unofficial background check if I see you know anybody you know beefing online or anything, oh, I'm man, I'm de- I'm definitely reading those comments. I mean, just I'm, you know, right, I'm and I'm looking at you know what you look like. She sits there and she said that you know you out there looking like a scruffy monkey. I'm gonna be you know looking at your profile picture and determining if you really a scruffy monkey or not. You know, like I I'm I'm nosy. That's you know just who my boyfriend tells me all the time. Get off Facebook. Stop <laughs> arguing with people. She be finding <laughs> you in the tag sex. I want to see what you really look like. Well, no, and I mean, I just, I don't know. I like, you know, t- arguing. I mean, that's kind of, I, I, I will say. Debating. Um, yes, debating. there we go. I love debating people about everything. I mean, that's literally good. anything that you, because um, I mean, I don't know. I'm just not willing to accept ignorance. Um, and so I kind of, I've taken that approach um, with the story. I've tried to steer clear of, you know, a lot of the speculation. I've tried to steer clear of a lot of the emotional whatnot um, and just pretty much stick to what we know for a fact in the story. And like I said before, it's, you know, almost nothing. I mean, on, you know, honestly, we know almost nothing about what really happened. Um, and I don't know. Part of me feels like, you know, making all of these assumptions about things at the end of the day kind of just makes everything clustered. I mean, it really doesn't. Oh, we like clutter and confusion. <laughs> we don't like, like, we don't like the, the, the meat. No, we no, like the right, garnish well, yeah. and the sides, and that's how everything gets fucked up. Some people don't know how to make good sides. Now, I don't want to call nobody out, but some of y'all be cooking some good ass entrees, but them sides, be, <laughs> them asparagus be wet. <laughs> Fuck, come on now. Mashed potatoes have all kind of dust spots in it because you ain't, you, your ready rice ain't good. That's how shit be online. You got good ass, like that good, oh man, this would be good. And then somebody add their sides, and then so it's like a shitty ass potluck where you're going there and you're looking. Who made that potato salad? <laughs> she did? Oh, no. Nah, we ain't going to eat that fucking <laughs> shit. But, um, so before we get into the next part, now we're going to get into theories that are could be plausible. And then we'll start to, I'll talk about some of the things I talked about with my, um, but in, uh, uh agency. And, uh, then what we think happened. Uh, but before I do that, <laughs> Touch Body Works, EvokeTouch.com, they have, uh, a deal for y'all listeners who listen to my podcast and want to get a natural, uh, well, I say natural. I'm trying to say something else that I, I don't want to say organic because everything isn't, but they do have some organic stuff. Um, they got some vegan stuff. Um, as you get body, what body bonds, skin care, and everything. Uh, it's just like a black bo- bath and body works. It's black owned, uh, but you can go over to evoketouch.com. 10% off, use the uh, promo code PODCAST10, P-O-D-C-A-S-T-10. 
one zero and get 10 percent off of whatever you order i personally like that perfect gentleman from that distinguished gentleman line but you got bath bombs you got uh facial cleansing things that women like <laughs> uh you got stuff for your hands your body just anything and it's all natural it's all handmade product by a black owned company you know i support black businesses like that um so go over to evoketouch.com skincare product that's so natural you can eat it but don't. Now, let's jump into this <laughs> other part. Um, <clears throat> theories. So one theory that uh, is plausible. I think it's plausible at least. So you talked about being drunk and drug. When I look at that video, those surveillance pieces. Now, personally, I do believe it's her in the surveillance. Um, when I look at the surveillance piece, it looks like a person... When I think about drunk people, and I've seen people drunk like that, um, I like to think that she wouldn't have been the only one that drunk that much. Or if she was the worst, there was like someone like a notch or two down, levels down, that should have also been somewhat in that same drunken state. And you don't have that or you don't have a report of that at all. But... I also see a person that looks like possibly drugged. Um, I've I've been on Ambien before, and if you watch a person who's on who's been on Ambien and probably let's say it took a little alcohol, like they stagger pretty badly. Um, and she almost looks like a person that was possibly drugged on top of alcohol, and maybe she was knocked out. And then this is her state of, was, I'm going to try to say it the right the first time, discombobulated. Nailed it. <laughs> she looked like a person who's, like, coming to their self and trying to navigate, like, like, to, like she's fucking zigzagging across the hall and bumping into shit. And so, to me, I, I, I don't know about you, but that's, that's pretty much, like, like, there's drunk, you know, blackout drunk. And I don't see a blackout drunk person, like, at that point, getting up mm -hmm. to do shit. Um, especially getting all the way downstairs. Right. Um, uh, so, I personally see a person that was drunk, drugged, possibly. Um, there's the stuff, you know, that people say they listen, they watch that little face, uh, Facebook Live video where they can hear things in the background being said. <laughs> I've listened to those enhancements. I've listened to the uh, video a couple times, and I want to say I don't hear it. But then there's parts of it where I'm like, it sounds like something. It sounds like something was being said. And it sounds like a little music. squeal or something like that right before. It's the part where, like, she starts playing music, the girl on in the main video. She plays music, and then you do hear, like, this little squeal right before. But the song is so in my feeling shitty that it could have been the un the like that right part of playing a shitty song because it, I don't know like that to me seems that on top of if that's her in that bed it seems like it kind of goes in play because she's laying down and now she's trying to figure out what's going on possibly trying to get away from those friends if they if she felt in herself uh, and this is a theory. This is not what I, I'm not going to say I 100% <laughs> believe this happened. It's just what I see putting these pieces together. That would be one um, thing that I would speculate uh, as a possibility. What do you think um, about that? Well, no. And, I mean, I I don't know how I feel. I mean, honestly, I just don't know how I feel about the entire story. Um, because I don't know. Uh, even, like, being drugged... Um, It's it's hard for me to swallow being that, that drunk? yeah I mean I mean not necessarily like, you know that her you know being I mean she could have been drugged I'm not saying you know that's not a thing but her being drugged to the point where you know she's walking around and gets into the you know freezer herself and you know well, let's, that let's, entire let's, let's, let's assume that we can't really figure out this freezer part at the moment because <laughs> that just I mean can anybody make any sense of that I mean. The only thing that I can think of personally that makes sense into, you know, a freezer 
would be you know organ trafficking things mm. that um and then people want to sit there and say that's a stretch but then you know i'm always reminded of uh, a story that i read in or you know about in um i want to say like my sociology class or something um with that uh that black boy who um was found wrapped up in a gym mat and oh, all man. of his yeah, organs yeah, yeah, were yeah. gone replaced with like you know, oh, I didn't a newspaper or something um that was a story that stuck with me for a really really long time Damn. and i want to say that we just found some more information about it i want to say that we just um somebody had just uh said that their friend you know told them that you know yes i did it you know, we sold his organs blah 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 um but i mean he was found in a gym mat at school and that i mean that story was just so i mean thinking about you know the whole organ thing I mean, that was just so just off the wall at that time and now coming around and saying you know that is what happened um i mean adding that freezer aspect that's all that you know personally i could i could think of um that drug trafficking i mean i drug human <laughs> body whatever trafficking human trafficking that is some fucking that's some cold-blooded stuff right there and the crazy the not crazy you know the crazy some the weird thing about it for me is like i would like <laughs> i would like to pass on the statement that i was about to make <laughs> um <laughs> Cause I'm I'm gonna go on the rabbit hole, but it's it's, it's it's I'll say this. It's somewhat bizarre for me, human trafficking, because like I know it's something called the dark web out there, and I know like this is some shit that happened. Hostile, I've seen that three times now, all three of them. So it's just like man, it's it's you know the freezer part does make that very that like I would like to say that's out of the realm but the freezer part is very interesting now um we'll go into something that could play into this as well is the um rape part of it that she was raped and in my mind i still feel parts of me feels like she was trying to get away now i'm gonna read some stuff from somebody's face what is this that's, that's facebook so this is a facebook i don't I don't know if these people connected with her. It seems like these people connected with her. But I'm just going to say what? This dude, Cornell Mitchell? I don't know you, bro. Don't come for me. Uh, he says this on Facebook. Um, if somebody's trying to rape you, let them. So you can get to your family and police and tell them why And tell them why put up a fight so they can kill you. Uh, I don't know. That's what I would want my little lady to do. I don't want my, little, I don't want my daughter to do no shit like that. But uh, he says bitches get themselves killed when they get raped, bitch. You ain't no virgin. Sit back, take the dick, and usually you'll go home and then tell the police. A lot of people wouldn't be dead if they would stay in their lane. Um, another thing that was said about this was the girl Irene Roberts, which is the girl that's in the video that we've been referencing back. Um, she says, "I right, this is about to get crazy, so I'm just going to lay all this out there. Um, she says something about Kanika being drunk. And then she says, Kanika was drunk. Uh, this is a Facebook comment feed that I know Dominique like to read. So <laughs> this type of shit she'll find one day. Uh, Kanika was drunk, over with. Uh, I don't know why she carried herself out of the room and leave her out there. Here, hold on. Hold on. I'm I'm going to finish this. But I got a comment. This is just black people comment. I need for y'all. Uh, Kanika was drunk, over with. I don't know why she carry herself her out of the room and leave her out there by herself and she knew she was drunk. I just want to know how she was gone that fast. Um, and someone else says, I'm telling y'all, y'all don't know everything because shit is about to start coming out now. I'm going to pause right there. There's another paragraph I'm going to read in just a second. Uh, this, when she says her, she's spelling this H-A, black people, niggas, whatever. What's the rush? Spell the word her. One more letter. I don't know if I was supposed to say ha as in ha ha or her as in her in some fucking slang way. H-E-R, her. I don't know. It take more. It takes me more effort to read the sentence than if you would just say what you want me to know. Please. Moving on. PSA. 
All right, then at some point, some uh, girl, Lucretia, uh, you know, I ain't gonna put it out there. Another girl says this I don't understand why this bitch is uploading photos, wanting everyone to feel bad. And y'all dumbass hoes was in her room with her while she was being hurt. The ugly bitch that had the phone, Irene, heard the girl saying, Help me, help me, please, and then turns the music on. Um, then before that, one of y'all was telling her he wants her to enjoy herself. She said, I am enjoying myself. Someone said, well, I don't see it then. And the dude said, so you riding with me or what? She kept telling him no. Her friend said, man, why the hell you tripping? But now y'all hoes want to upload photos saying y'all don't know what happened when clearly it's on live video. Y'all set her up. Then took her phone and mom's car. She died at 1248 Friday. And y'all had her car until 4 a.m. trying to think of what to do and say. So to make y'all selves look innocent, y'all uploading photos, shared her mom's post to make everyone think y'all didn't do anything. Shake my head. Uh, love will get you killed. Y'all ugly asses are about to do time. And Irene deleted her page. Why? Bitch, the video's out. I wish I would have said that with more sass. <laughs> Bitch, I don't know what happened. Fuck you mean. Um, so all of this uh, alludes to her being raped and killed um i could see it i could see it uh the only thing that makes me on the fence about that is that's a room full of calm ass people um for all intents and purposes this is a group of calm ass people for someone to be raped in that moment raping happened in that moment in some form or some fashion one or two people, maybe, um, but a whole room of people seemed like they were okay. But then that's the part of it that seems like a squeal to me as she said she was saying something before the music came back on, which I question that as well. Uh, I don't know if it's the song or if it was Kanika saying something. I don't know if that was Kanika at all, to be honest with you. You can't really tell. Uh, but someone was laying there and someone was on the bed. What do you think? Um, well, I mean, personally, I had always thought that uh, the rape happened. Um, and I have read a lot of things saying that, like, you know, talking about, you know, the how chill everyone was in the video, um, where people were saying that the guys were threatening everyone in the room. And so the reason why she did the live video was to try to expose people while still, you know, being quiet enough to protect herself. Um, but you do have this one part of that video where some other girl jumps in mm -hmm. and says, who are you talking to or whatever. Right. And so, I mean, obviously at that point, she, they didn't know that she was on live. Um, and then once again with like, you know, how they did. I mean, I did notice how they turned up the music at really random times, mm -hmm. honestly, where just randomly the music would get louder and they get quieter again and they get, you know. Um, and so, I mean, all of that was suspect. Um and I would say as a person who uh, is known for just cutting this camera on randomly at random times, uh, granted, the people around me, when I'm doing this, they trust the situation. They know what I'm doing. They know I got to get some of these kind of like off kilter moments. But there are times where something weird is happening. I'm like, mm, camera not on that. And then I do something different to adjust the scene or the shot. Or even it shows sometimes where... I pushed the mic away to talk about some other things. And it does seem like there's these, like you said, these weird moments of like the dude is talking to someone clearly and then boom, the music plays. It's like, well, shit, if it was me trying to have a conversation with somebody, I'm kind of mad that you just turned the music on in right. the middle of what I'm saying. But no one was alarmed by that. And some of the things that seemed like it was starting to be said in those moments were also like things that you can insinuate. There's something more, something seemingly criminal happening in this room. So I can see that as well. As you were. <laughs> I cut you off. <laughs> oh, no. And so, like I said, um, that, I mean, the entire video to me was incredibly suspect. Um, there is um, a part that was said uh, in that, in one of these exchanges where, like, she was, died, she was dead at um, <clears throat> 1248. One of these girls said on here when I was reading these comments, but uh, it was a part that I I actually voted because I thought it was pretty good. It says uh, from the original story around 10 p.m. Um, uh, Jenkins 
it was said that Jenkins was spotted uh, on video at about 3.20 a.m. staggering drunk from near the front desk. So that kind of throws off the 12.48 thing, the person. And so here's one thing that happens, and you should know this as a person that likes to argue online <laughs> um, or debate online, is that sometimes you can read a person that puts a paragraph word for information and it seems like, oh, this is going to be some good shit, and it really be a bunch of like nonsense, be a bunch of nothing, a bunch of speculation. So as good as that paragraph and more logical some of that sounds in that paragraph, when you get that time off and you make that comment, then it's like, all right, well, there's some degree of evidence that disputes that claim, despite the fact at 4 a.m. is when Kanika's mom actually ended up getting uh, reports from the friend that Kanika was missing. Damn, that's not too far off from that time that she was seen on that video. Um, no, and then there, they said hmm. there was another video of her at like 3 a.m. partying, you know, in that in a room with a bunch of other people, um, which I know that uh, people were questioning if that was really her. Once again, they were like, well, that looks a lot like the girl who was, you know, in the walking video. So was that really her to begin with? I mean, there's. Yeah, I don't know about that one. The party video. Um, I think that's that's too hard. Mm -hmm. that, that one is too far. Another way. All right, so um, so I talked to my friend. I talked about from the FBI, uh, the agency. I got to I gotta make sure I blurt that one out. <laughs> um, so I asked her a bunch of questions, a ton of questions um, that were interesting to me, such as, um, you know, where if it was her with this information, where would she start? Um, and so, so the videos, the videos she say, are motion activated videos her concern was that all right if these are okay first on the videos a lot of people say why are they only releasing parts of videos why are there gaps in videos all this type of stuff so <clears throat> part of it can be that motion um cameras motion cameras is just an efficient way for um hotels to not keep 24-hour surveillance they only really need it when something is happening in a certain hallway or area so that would be one reason why they was just trying to be efficient in this situation but she says if there are motion activated videos why isn't why isn't um there any surveillance of someone of the person who found her so you have her going into this kitchen where this where this fridge was at then why isn't there someone that activate that same camera that found her like that is also should be useful information as well if it's an innocent situation then there should be no problem with saying oh this person walked the same path as Kanika and this is how we found her so that's a concerning thing uh, uh, that she had as well as uh, we're talking video you're talking camera I just lost my train of thought I'll let you talk while I think about it <laughs> How does that sound to you? Um, well, I mean, I, that's another thing that um, I was just thinking about. Because um, who did it ever say who found her? They said they um, there is they never uh, they only said that as far as the stories I've read, they've only said that they were found, um, but no information of who found her. Mm -hmm. So. Um, then why were we looking in the refrigerator? I mean, I mean, that's just, you know, why, why is that the, like, you know, one of the places that we looked, how often do we find people in the freezer? So I mean. she says, uh, about that part, uh, it's funny you said it cause that's what I wrote <laughs> down, um, is that, um, for this to be an area, and this is one of the concerns I had for this to be an area that, uh, was under construction where she was found was a place. So some of this I was leaving out in the beginning because I knew I was going to talk about it. So the area that she was found, this freezer was a freezer that wasn't being used. It was also part of a rest, a construction area of the hotel and a part of a restaurant that had yet to be open or even near opening. So the concern she had is why is this freezer on in the first place, which that's like the one piece of this whole thing, regardless of how we explain it out. Why is the freezer on for a thing that's not even open? Why are lights on in the kitchen for a place that's not even open? Like, And, and the freezer was empty except for her. And so there was 100% no reason for her. So it then leads to, like, why, what led people down that direction to say, oh, let me go try the empty part of the hotel, which glad they did, apparently. But 
Um, Cause I think as well as like I've been to casinos, I've been to buildings that are under construction, and in those areas, it's usually tarped up, wrapped, uh, um, roped off. Like a lot of information lets you know no one beyond this area. I didn't see and then those videos. I didn't really see any construction going on. I mean, there was just like a bunch of emptiness. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't either. But I think what it, we, we're talking about a total of about four videos. I think four or five videos of a person is just walking around the hotel, wandering, either drunk, in my opinion, drugged. Oh, I wasn't supposed to get there yet. Pisses me feel like she was drugged, but um, just a drunk person walking around. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of if this is motion activated, I think you have to follow. Oh, another piece. She says, um, well, you can't because it was a public place. You can't really hide this information. So anyone who wants that information through the Freedom of Information Act, uh, you can get this hotel surveillance. The police is not the police is basically putting out the stuff that they think are helpful. But if someone wants that information, it's free to get. So um, people could go get that civilians like yourself. I'm not I'm not working that hard, but someone could go get that information and see uh, the different. Uh, people who may have went down that hall that day and followed it out. Now the freezer. She's that drunk, in my opinion, drugged. I don't think she can open that door. Right. I mean, and good. I mean, just the entire. Once again, I mean, the entire thing is just. And then we don't have any footage of her actually getting into the freezer or nope. where the freezer even is. Like that's the only part. You know, it seems that we just don't have any type of video for. And that's also kind of curious. I mean, at the very least. An important video to me that I would like to see is friends in the hotel outside of the room. Those same, you know, the lobby, every lobby has a camera at that desk. Uh, if they were at that desk, I would like to see them at that desk. What are their, what are their demeanor at that desk? Um, and it's it's kind of I mean and that's one thing that I thought about that it was kind of weird that we didn't do a timeline with a video like with all videos that we possibly have of you know just the entire night because there should be a lot more video with other people because you know they had to have gone into the room somehow so there should at least be video of them going into the room yeah and so I mean just really I don't understand and leaving the room yeah and getting I've, to the elevator I've watched you know quite a bit of you know quite a few different times or you know crime shows and things and one of the things that I know that they do is you know make a complete timeline um, one excuse that I was making at first until I talked to my friend is like well, maybe she went into the, you know, maybe they were downstairs about to leave. She was really fucked up drunk. And she. So sometimes, and this is not victim blaming, this is speculation, people. So leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> um, sometimes we don't like what we don't know the capacity of the friendship in terms of like, is she that friend that is the one that gets drunk like that? is the one that go gets the beers and drinks for everybody because at first i was saying maybe maybe she was wandering off to go find more liquor and keep the party going my friend said to me if that's the case she would have opened that freezer and saw ain't no alcohol in here and kept going it would be no reason for her to go all the way into the freezer to this point so it gets dicey. It keeps getting dicey. I also asked about the, like, is, is you know, the, the hotel not going actively to, like, look for in the plea of all this. Uh, no, you know, it, it sounded like the hotel just really, I mean, you know, from the first interaction with the mother, it sounded like they really weren't all that into trying to help the investigation. I mean, in my opinion, I mean, it just. Well, her opinion was that, because I asked, is it lazy or were they just, like, not want to create a stir in the hotel? So, like, probably lazy. Just because, you know, night managers and stuff like that, that's pretty much the lax part of a hotel uh, night. They just kind of hanging out. Uh, I, I did read that the girl, there was a girl that worked at the hotel, a part of that party, a part of the group, or or knew the people in the group. And so they was giving that, hookups. Yeah, and all I heard that she shit. was the one that got them the room and everything. So with that, it could be plausible. I will hold that part. So, um... What else we talked about? We talked about quite a bit. Is there, let me ask you, is there any question that you have about the situation? And we just a speculation report. 
this, you know, we, I don't got answers. I mean, just what the heck happened? I mean, I, I mean, at the end, that's a fair one. That's a fair one. Everybody wants that. That's what I want to know. Um, and just how did how how did we get to this point? How did we get to where we are right now with all of this, you know, going around and, you know, all of these, you know, little conspiracy theories and, you know, everybody wanting to put their two cents worth in. I mean, just honestly, how did I find out about this situation on Facebook first before Mm. I ever heard about any from like, you know, any kind of news or anything like that? I mean, just how? Uh, That's what Facebook wants. They want it. They want to be the news source. (laughs) All right. So we'll jump into this. What do you think happened? Um. And this is all speculation, people. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, 100% um, speculation. But I will say um, the entire freezer aspect of it definitely had, and it's from the very beginning of the story, um, it's always had me leaning towards, you know, the Oregon stuff. Um, And honestly, the biggest reason is, like, I bring back, you know, that kid in a gym mat. Um, You know, those kinds of things are happening. Um, and then I would assume that, you know, Chicago would be a place that, you know, taking, you know, black people organs wouldn't be too difficult to do in. I mean, that really sucks to say. Shame on you, Chicago. Shame on, you know, the police departments who have all, have already sat there and stated that they feel like they shouldn't have to protect the people there. I mean, I've, I've you know, I've heard, you know, the police officers before, you know, just... Uh, why do we have to, you know, clean up the city when they're not trying to, you know, help themselves? Um, and so, I mean, if you consider all of that, um, just, I'm, just why, how? Um. But shout out the chance to rap. No, <laughs> kidding. Um, so you think it's a so so if if we go the route of uh, organ trafficking, how does this start? How does how do we go from a to freezer um well goodness i because i i do want to say that you know the rape was in there um because there are a lot of signs that point to that too um and so that's you know where it gets really really dicey did that happen did it not happen um the ra- and then the rape. yeah yes the rape um and then you know what killed her what because i mean we still was it you know being in the freezer that you know kind of ended you know was she strangled because even then the police you know the first police report was saying that you know there wasn't any you know physical anything but you know if she was raped and you know strangled and things like that there would be a lot of physical evidence um i mean just rape alone there's a lot of physical evidence for her. and if it's rape Putting in the freeze is a really dumb decision. Yeah. No, I mean, that has to probably be one of the absolute worst things you could do for yourself. Um, and so, I mean, there is, you know, definitely um, a question there. Um, but I will say that I've read a lot that says that, you know, the friends were paid off for that. Um, and I happen to know that, uh, you know, the organ trafficking stuff, especially for black people, our organs are worth quite a lot. Um, the darker you are, the more your organs are worth, actually. We safe. <laughs> we safe like mother. Well, maybe not. I mean, well, no. like, shit, you yeah. get a discount. I ain't got a thousand. I got 500. God damn. No, and I got to warn speed. y'all. Yeah, I got to warn y'all right now. I take a lot of medications and stuff, so my liver and kidneys and whatever are probably pretty messed up. So <laughs> y'all don't want to take these organs in here. <laughs> don't even do it. <laughs> Don't um, do it. It's a yeah. limit. <laughs> right. It'd be right. It'd be a waste of time on your part. Um, but no, I mean, I not to, you know, make light of, you know, any type of that kind of thing. Um, but I mean, that is definitely something that we have to look at. I mean, it sucks to say, but because of the fact that, you know, the freezer came into it, that is honestly just the possibility that makes the most sense to me. So I never thought about it until you brought that up. It's a good theory. Um, I so everything for me stops at the freezer. Like I, I can't like even so for me what I think. Oh, I guess I never thought about what I thought happened. Um When I look at the video, I do feel like there was a I'm a, I have, I feel I really feel like she was drugged, um, but it seems like so. Here's the thing: the reason why I mention I say the thing about, and I'm sure you know this, but um, about the freezer being dumb is like you preserve a lot of 
Like you slow decay down a lot. You slow everything about the process of the body down by a lot. That's Basically the best way to uh, yeah, best way to preserve evidence is to <laughs> put someone inside a freezer. And so, and then the best way to throw off uh, Ted K- 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 uh not Ted K- Klinsky. I can't think of his name right now. The Ice Man. Uh, one thing he would do when he killed and chopped people up, he would put them in a freezer and then. Keep them frozen for a week and then set them out because that will mess up the time of death. It, uh, it, when they detecting this, it messes up the time of death. Instead of saying you got killed on Tuesday, it could look like you got killed on Saturday. So it's just that's how it's preserving. So if you raped them and you put it in the freezer, you really pretty much put it. They freeze your, your, your semen. I'm going to say something bad. It would have been weird. They freeze your semen to preserve it for, um, what is it called? Uh, sperm donors, <laughs> that thing. So if you raped her, it's in there. So putting the freezer would be pretty dumb. Well, I mean, we have to remember that. I mean, and you know, while I, you know, apologize for you know calling her because you know a 19 year old, that's a young woman. Um, but essentially, they're still kids. I mean, I'll say I'm, I'm 20. I'm still a kid. Mm. Um, <laughs> I'm grown as fuck. <laughs> Y'all know this. <laughs> I'm gonna claim that I'm a kid until I'm 25. <laughs> I'll take that. I got grown uh, <laughs> ass bills. I, I'm grown. <laughs> <laughs> well, but no, um, but you know, I mean, just a sense they're still in like a kid like mindset. Um, and so would they, I just, would they think about something like that? You know, if, you know, if the rape did True happen, enough. would he, would they think about, oh, this is going to, you know, preserve the DNA and, you know, I mean, Unless you watch a lot of crime shows, that's probably, you know, that's true. something that you're not going to really think about all too hard. So here's where it gets tough. Because I do think, I, I personally do feel like the the friends had a lot to do with it. I mean, they had to have. Because, I mean, I I have some really close friends. Um, and I'm, you know, pretty confident with my circle. And I just continuously ask myself, what type of friend lets, you know, their friend get that, you know, messed up. And doesn't oh, say, lot. hey, sit down. Oh, goodness, <laughs> I mean, maybe just thank God for the friends that I was able to find. Because, yeah. I mean. It's My friends ain't shit. Y'all know <laughs> y'all ain't shit. <laughs> and, I mean, that's, that's another thing that was really hard for me to wrap my mind around. How, you know, something could happen to her with, you know, supposedly her best friend. You know, for, like, for life best friend. I want to say, like, since third grade or something, I want to say that she was saying. Just yeah, how? I did see that. That's why I got started on this thing. That's why I got started. Yeah, because she was talking about, oh, I miss, like, you know, oh, you're my best friend. I hope you're okay. Hope we can find you. Been best friends since, like, third grade, something like But it's, how do you misplace your best friend since third grade? I mean, I'm not sure about, you know, other females, but I know that if I go to a party or something with, you know, somebody close to me, we're sticking by each other's side. We're not going to lose each other for anything. So that's what my investigator friend said, too, is like, like, you know, because I said, for me, if it was my homie and he he went off, I'd be like, oh, he out, whatever. Because I said, is it fair to judge them for how quick they reported it? Because I kind of think that I would have been a little delayed in my report as well. But she also felt like today shit is so different that homegirls stick together. So it really wouldn't have been, it shouldn't have been a situation where one got away because they always trying to make sure – where where can they get? Okay, we go to the bathroom together. I mean, honestly, Come like child. females, we go to the bathroom together. Like if we're going to Cock like a bar blocking. or the club or something, we're going to the bathroom together. We see, you know, a guy trying to talk to our friend, and we know that she doesn't want to talk to him. We pretend to be girlfriends, like you know. Man, we're, y'all we're hate there, it. <laughs> we're there for each other. I told you, I blame me no cheat. But um, uh, yeah. So well, here's this is where like I get in this weird place. Because I do feel like something happened, I mean, with the friends. But then you get this part where she's so isolated by herself in this hotel. It's like, well, shit. All right. Uh, what was, ha- like, what friend? What friend got this going? What what part of the game was this? And then you just got that pivotal moment right before the freezer. Like, I don't, I, it doesn't matter how you line this thing up. You cannot, I guess, well, you can. I, I just cannot explain the freezer how the fuck does a person get there by themselves unless pennyworth was in there i like there's no reason 
in this situation a drunk oh so my, then i have another friend jesus christ man. i got another <laughs> friend who um had this idea is like you know or actually uh my investigator said this i told my friend about what the investigator said she said she is curious of the background of the staff if there is a construction the background of those people the background of the staff do anyone have a criminal record were there loose uh, hiring standards because um you know it could be random it's possible that it's random in the in in the idea of the isolation part my friend goes you know he's the same person he likes to watch see no eve on discovery <laughs> id and that's built around surveillance like they tracking a the person the whole story is built around surveillance and he, he referred to a case where a girl was murdered and it was completely random from a person who just had it in them. And for her to be walking around stumbling drunk by herself, just opportunity, an opportunistic killing. Uh, but then, like a killer, and you probably know this, killers like to thrive in that moment. Why go, oh, I'm going to take this person, throw him in the freezer. But we also don't know the means in which her death was did she die in the freezer or did something else happen and it's just put in the freezer so no, and then i also um well no because we say that you know one of the friends works at the hotel okay so how well does kanika know this hotel how well do you know how, how well does the hotel know her you know are they frequently there do they frequently have parties um because that was another thing that you know just never came up in anything that i've read like how often are they at this hotel are they frequent faces here? And that would explain why they was being shifty about helping the investigation, even though the mom was playing. Like, that girl at the desk probably knew some shit and was just like, mm, I ain't saying nothing. I don't know. Right. And then, I mean, I know for hotels, at least here, you're supposed to be like 21 to be able to rent a room. And so all these teenagers in this room, I mean, obviously the hotel was had to have been doing, because you know, even like an employee, you're still, you're not supposed to give somebody a hotel if they're under 21. Like that's, you know, just what it is. Um, and so the hotel had to have, I mean, at the very least, they gave that room to them, you know, illegally, knowing that they're underage. My investigator asked her this before I said, all right, if it was you, tell me, if you got an investigation that got to start somewhere or in somewhere, where do you lean? Friends, hotel, random. And she says her gut would take her to the friends. She'd be surprised if the friends had nothing to do with it. The hotel, in essence, in ways, seemed like they were acting towards protecting themselves. Um, in the way that they responded or not responded, it was like, well, you know, our staff screwed up somewhere. Let's try to make sure we don't create a problem for ourselves. So their negligence also assisted in the the problem or the murder or crime, my position, murder. Um, but random is just, for her, is just too hard to say. Hold on, and that, I mean, with it being that late, um, and then we don't see absolutely anybody else in the hallways or anything like that, um, the chances, you know, I mean, really, what are the chances of, you know, her running into somebody that's also, you know, in that same area as she is and gets killed by them? Because what are you doing, you know, in that, no one in that been area? In the area? Exactly. Um, so I don't know. I mean, just personally, it's always sounded it had to have been close to home. I mean, you know, that's just how I've always felt about it. Um, All right. Well, <laughs> I think it's good to end on that. Uh, you say it's close to home. I think it's the friend's. We'll see what happens, but it's shitty to say. Things happen like most things in Chicago. I give it two weeks. We ain't talking about it again. Well, no, and then, I mean, I I don't know. I'm assuming that we're probably, there's going to be just another story that's going to, you know, captivate us in the same way, and so we're not going to have enough time to really. The public outcry. I think, like, people like me and you that like this kind of stuff want to go, you know, two weeks from now, three weeks from now, I'll be like, I wonder what happened with Kanika. Uh, most people will move on to the next thing, which is as per usual, which, you know, a lot of investigations do take time. Um, unfortunately, a lot of them do take time. You can't solve everything in a week. Um, but 
it's good to talk about armchair detective a lot of conspiracy on this a lot of you know when black twitter <laughs> get on anything we it's gonna fuck thing. it up a little bit <laughs> run with the story so i mean it's a good run it's a real life who done it. it's a good who done it. it's a real because it could go in either way i mean no one said aliens ghosts <laughs> i mean that's possible there's no I, I, I guess but i thank you for doing the show glad you came through showed up i don't know i think thank you for having me it's a little chilly out here but see i asked it. i thought i was like mm. The sun peaked out for a little bit, and like, damn it, it went away. Oh well, yeah, no, it hasn't been too bad. And then I'm just, I'm just glad that fall is finally here. That's. Whew. Yeah, you know what? Last time I came out here and recorded, it was hot as shit, boy. <laughs> but uh, I want you to plug your. Uh, it's so weird to ask you to plug that after talking <laughs> about donors and fucking organ. Organ oh, trail. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, not organ trail, really organ trafficking. Kind of bring it all together really quick. <laughs> it's callback. It's a comedy they call it callback. <laughs> Somehow you plug that and then we'll end this whole thing. Okay, so y'all, please, please, please check out DKMS. Um, like I said before, personally, I want to do a uh, big Wichita event with it. Um, so, hey, please, uh, I have Facebook, I have Twitter, I have Instagram, I have a Snapchat. Um, my handle for pretty much everything is Devontress. Uh, you know, just D V O N T R E S S. My name is Dominique Vontress. You can find me on Facebook. Um, I go by my government name. That yes, that is my real name, not a stage name or anything. See that Vontress <laughs> sound like some uh, BDSM Fifty Shades type thing? Because oh, no, I have, I have had people like sit there and they're like. Is that your real name or and I'm like, um, yeah, I, I don't have a model name. My name is just Dominique, D- Dominique Vondress. Hey, so. but it's Dominique <laughs> and it's spelled differently, so she's not going to be easy to find. Oh, yeah, no. Um, actually, and I probably, um, it's D-O-M-O-N-I-Q-U-E. Um, I'm the only person in the entire world with that spelling of my name with Vondress. So, yay for me. I'm glad I don't have, like, a little, a basic, you know, just like a, a Sarah Smith. <laughs> a thousand of one of y'all out there. Shout out to Sarah Smith. <laughs> but no, okay, so like I said, um, it's dkms.org. Uh, but please, um, get in touch with me if you want to, you know, be part of this event. Um, I kind of, you know, have already been planning it out. I don't want to spill too much information about it because... I know how many people out here like to idea Jack, so I'm gonna sit there. Fuck and them! <laughs> you got, hey, look, if you all it's about execution. You know how many people talking about they want to do a podcast? Like, come on, will you step it up? <laughs> well, no, I know I can do a bigger and better than y'all, so don't even try to compete. There you go. <laughs> but no, um, and so I really, I would, you know, love the city support. Um, you know, we're looking for local businesses um i do want to put emphasis on black businesses uh black artists and things like that you know just because um i'm really into supporting that and also a uh, hispanic heritage month so any hispanic business owners you know please hit me up um i would love to collaborate with you guys um like i said i you know do some modeling um also you know some uh brand promoting and stuff like that um what y'all say <laughs> hold on my audience say you want to shoot with me huh <laughs> she needs to shoot with me oh well, no yes um definitely yeah shoot uh, with your boy. <laughs> no definitely i'm always you know looking to expand my portfolio and things like that um but no, like I said, um, supporting my community is something that I'm very into. Um, Wichita has welcomed me with extremely open arms, and I really, really appreciate you guys for that. Because um, I do know that you know most of you guys grew up together, know each other extremely personally. You know everybody's know family. Hold on, I'm gonna stop you. Y'all know where I'm from. I only sound like these people over here. I'm just lucky people fuck with me. So see, I get it. You know what I mean? I understand completely. Everybody know each other, high five. And I'm like, well, how you know this? Yeah, exactly. I did an interview out here uh, one time. I'm doing an interview by five motherfuckers. What's up, boy? How <laughs> late? What's up? Where, how, where you been? Like, go ahead. I'm interrupting. Well, but. no, like, I actually, I found out that uh, my boyfriend's family and my family on this side, um, my dad's side of the family, they are very, very close to each other. Um, grew up going to church together and things like that. Um, before y'all was... Yeah, before we got together. Um, small town. Well, boy. no, definitely. Um, and actually, one of my biggest problems I've noticed uh, living here is that I'm glad I'm with my current boyfriend and, you know, I plan on being with him because <laughs> we end up finding out that I'm related to a lot of people here. Um, 
And so you have to be like if you're you ain't related yeah, to no. me. me being a vontress, I have to be very, very careful. Uh she like half vampire, know everybody. <laughs> Oh, no, I mean, because then I have, like, you know, the Bryant side and the Vontress, and I mean, between those two sides of the family, they're related to everybody, they know everybody, grandparents were out there just doing way too much most of the time, but I mean, y'all know how that is. The absolute most. <laughs> but see, it's easy, though, to happen here, honestly, because I'm going to talk demographics here, like, there are, the black, black demographic here is like seven, 9%, mm -hmm. so... If you know any black people, you probably know <laughs> most of them. So that's why I kind of stayed to my, you know what, let me, it's not about me. <laughs> it's about organs and donating. Yeah, just make sure you're not stealing anything out there. And don't um, take them. <laughs> but no, yes, um, I would absolutely love for, you know, the city support. Um, that's, you know, what we're going for right now. Because like I said, um, I definitely, let me, a little bit of information. I definitely want to incorporate our basketball teams um kind of hoping for KU just because you know KU till I die shout out to you Frank Mason I know you left but I need to shout you out real quick I'm very proud of you um I'm excited to see what you're doing uh you know with your little professional career here in Cantler we're we're happy Kansas is happy um and then, I mean, I have to shout out Ron Baker, too, of course. WSU, Ron Baker, Knicks, you're going to be putting. I can already know. I mean, with Mel, with Melo being gone, you, you have to step up. And so, hopefully, we see a little bit from you. Um, Y'all know I don't no. get no fucks about no WSU, but you have fun yeah. with it. <laughs> no, because I, I do. Um, I want to. I'm hoping that we can, you know, get our WSU basketball team involved, um, KU basketball team. Like I said, I want this to be, you know, a a yearly event for our city um, because it's not only, you know, about us, you know, coming together, supporting local businesses and things, but also being able to support people who, you know, need bone marrow and stuff. Um, because like I said, being able to save a life means everything to me. Um, you know, just applying to be able to save a life means a lot. Um, so I just, I would really appreciate the support. Uh, yeah, please uh, connect with me. And I accept pretty much all my Facebook requests for friends and stuff, unless you look crazy. Um, I'm, I'm still independent. <laughs> Fuck this about everybody but your boy. Uh, give them that website again. Uh, DKMS.org. Um, please check it out. Read a little bit about it. Um, and then, of course, you know, if that's not for you, we completely understand, um, but please, you can still, you know, try to support this event and try to, you know, support what's going on. Um, I completely understand if you're not, you know, into it, um, but, you know, it's just really about the community coming together and us just help, being able to help each other. Because, um, I mean, that's just really, that's something that I love about Wichita, um, I noticed, because I, I, um, I was born in uh, California, San Pedro, California, um, and so, you know, f from the L.A. area, and Wichita really comes together for each other, I've noticed. Um, there is, you know, a lot of local support for us, um, and so, I mean, just keep doing what you're doing, keep supporting local, support anything local, absolutely anything. Um, and we'll link all this information to her on the uh, notes of the show um, on the Facebook page, of course. Also on the Podbean, iTunes, and all that. Uh, on 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 what's the what's the group calling it? Uh, DKMS. On DKMS, as well as her, how to get to her directly if you want to be a part of this event that she's trying to grow. We gotta get you on some more shows so mm -hmm. you can get access. I think I got one. I'm gonna get you when we get over here. Um, uh, Cause you know what, y'all know I don't give a fuck. Cause it's all about the work to me. I help people do whatever. It's about then you got to execute. It's always about executing the work. If you're doing something better than anybody else, just do the shit. Don't wait. Don't be scared. Um, kind of Famous Pod, K-I-N-D-A Famous Pod, P-O-D, on Twitter and Facebook. Y'all know I don't really use that Twitter shit, but you can hit the Facebook <laughs> um, as well. Uh, make sure you subscribe, like, share, tell a friend uh, on the iTunes, the Google Music, everywhere that you can stream podcasts is where I'm at. Um those, I'm going to let y'all know, sharing that shit helps, rating definitely helps, these numbers going up, everything going up, y'all been buying that damn people collector, which I fucking love, and the book is doing well, I just started working, uh, really seriously working on the second edition, which will also have an audio book to go with it as well, 
and starting um, a couple new documentaries soon. I'll be talking about that as soon as I know something. Uh, also, uh, Black Men Don't Cheat Seminar is in <laughs> November. Uh, but we're going to do something uh, before that um, with Big Sam at one of the local barbershops. Um, uh, let me get some fellas together. We're going to talk about our dog-ass ways. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, uh, hopefully that's going to be mid-October. In October, we're going to play a lot with um, the paranormal stuff. I, I, I'm trying to book a couple episodes where we can talk um, – to mediums, uh, clairvoyance, psychics, ghost hunters, shit like that. Because uh, that's the type of shit I'm really into. Y'all probably don't know this by the way I talk and sound. But I, I like that kind of weird shit. Uh, it's interesting to me. So I'm trying to book a few shows that about that. And uh, have fun in October because I love Halloween. That's one of my favorite holidays. Uh, not no demonic kind of way. <laughs> uh, but, you know, you clowns can stay away from it. Cause I'm not afraid of clowns, so don't get it fucked up. My name ain't Dominique. I will clap on you. Uh, but anyway, kind of famous podcast. Thanks again uh, for doing the show. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I mean, I think we hit almost every party this we can hit without being overly offensive and digging into some dumb weed that really just doesn't make sense. So if y'all think we got something wrong, want to correct something, or you think you got more information, please put it in the comments, in the notes, or you can email me directly, kindofamouspod at gmail.com. Until then, tell your mama I say hi. So in light of you being kind of famous. Why the hell I'm kind of famous? Who the hell she knows?